Hi guys, my name is Ben Guilford. I'm the owner of The Fire Brick Company and in this video we're going to take you through the process of cutting and attaching your timber formwork uh, that's going to enable you to pour your reinforced concrete slab for the top of your wood-fired oven stand. Now the previous process of laying the block work is really very straightforward. Uh, it's like big messy Lego uh, with concrete. Uh, but this step is a little bit more complicated, um, but in the end, it's as simple as building a wooden box that you're gonna pour concrete into. Uh, so it's not rocket surgery, um, but at the same time, it is a little bit more complicated than the last process, um, but please don't let it overwhelm you. Uh, if you watch this video, we're gonna take you through step-by-step step how to create your formwork, uh, and then how to cut and lay your reinforcing and then pouring the concrete once that's all done. We are suckers for punishment apparently. Uh, so rather than building a nice simple rectangular stand uh, which enables us to cut simple rectangular pieces of formwork, we have built the corner stand uh, which is the most challenging uh, of, of the stands and of course we've built it right into a corner uh, which adds another layer of complexity uh, on top of that. Uh, but we thought we'd do that because that way we can show you the worst case scenario. This is, you know, this is as tricky as it gets. If you're building a straight on rectangular stand, uh, which you'll find links to the, the layout diagrams for those uh, in the description, uh, it's a lot easier. Uh, and you're, you're dealing with some pretty basic geometry. Whereas, what we're dealing with here is a, a little more complicated, but the process is the same regardless of your stand layout. It do, it, it's, it's the same process, just the shapes uh, are different of the formwork that you're gonna be cutting. So, first step is we're going to attach supports for our timber formwork to the block work. And that's the reason we wanna leave the blocks. Once you've poured the cores, you need to leave them to set for at least 48 hours before you move on to setting up your formwork. The idea there is that this concrete in the cores is going to set rock hard and enable you to drill into the blocks so that you can put in screws or other anchors to hold the formwork uh, to the block. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is getting some pine. Now I've got 90 by 45 mil uh, structural pine here. You could use 70 by 35, you could use just about anything as long as you've got enough room to screw into the top. Because what we're going to do is, we're going to attach this to this surface. We're going to attach it so that it's sitting below this surface by the thickness of our formwork. So that our concrete ends up flush with the top of these blocks. If I bolt it up here, my formwork is going to sit on top of that. Uh, and then I'm going to have some fun uh, because, well, my, my formwork is sitting above the block. So we want the, the concrete to be coming in basically flush with the blocks, even a little bit uh, below is, is not a problem. Now, attaching these to the blocks, there are two basic methods. There's, there's actually quite a, a few ways you could do it. The two ways I like either using masonry screw, like it's concrete screws, concrete anchors. There's a whole bunch of different ones of these. I like using the ones that you can pull out rather than the um, the anchors that you hammer in and then do up a nut on top, um, that leaves a stud in the surface. These you can pull them out and you're just left with a hole. The other option is two big nails, right? This is the cheap option. Uh, is you drill a hole into your concrete and you put two nails into the hole and hammer them in. And this is actually something I saw the uh, form workers on site doing when uh, I was working uh, in structures. Uh, I saw them using two big nails and just smashing them into the hole. So I'm going to get started and I'm going to show you both ways and then hey, you can pick and choose which one is best for you. Okay, so guys, remember this is one of the more uh, complicated processes. Also one of the dangerous ones because you're working with power tools. Uh, so I'm not your mum, I don't get to tell you what to do, but I do get to make some suggestions. Uh, make sure you're wearing gloves. Make sure you are wearing safety glasses. For the love of all that is good, just wear safety glasses. I cannot tell you how many times I've thought, oh, it's a quick job. I'll, oh, the glasses are over there. I'll just cut something and get something in my eye and then I'm at the doctor's. And... Anyway, please wear your safety gear. So, 
safety glasses, some, some hearing protection, gloves, uh, and familiarize yourself with the, with the tools. Um, use some clamps to hold the timber in place. Professionals will, you know, just hold it with one hand, zip, but they've been, they've done a full, you know, five year apprenticeship. They've been doing it for years. You might not have. So take your time, don't rush it. This is, you're building something that's gonna be there for like 30 to 50 to 100 years. Like, you, why would you rush it? So take your time, make sure you're set up and you're, you're comfortable, okay? Uh, so I've got a circular saw here. If you have a drop saw, great, you can use that. Uh, but I've measured out my length of timber and I'm just gonna cut it. Doesn't have to be cut perfectly square. It just has to be cut roughly to that length so that when I bolt it on, it gives me a support along that whole section of block work. Before we put it on, we just wanna make sure that we haven't got anything on the concrete that's gonna get in the way. So when you, know, when you pour these blocks, sometimes concrete's hanging over the edge, you just get a, a trowel, just make sure that surface is clear. We can get a bit of timber, put it on roughly where I think it should go, and get a clamp, and just hold that on. For the formwork, the, the, the wood that we're gonna be using to create this floor, uh, we're gonna be using form ply. Uh, this is what it's called here in Australia. Uh, in other parts of the world, it's probably got a different name. It's a film face plywood. Uh, it's incredibly strong. Uh, it's got quite a significant um, sort of structural capacity, which is why it's used in concrete. So you can put a lot of weight on it before it starts to, to bow. Uh, it's also got a shiny surface, and the idea of that is concrete doesn't stick to it. So you get a nice, you know, shiny uh, finish on your concrete uh, when you're done. Now, what we want to do is we want to get this attached at the right height. I mentioned before uh, about with us wanting to to have it at this height. Now if we, so I'll exaggerate and say, right, we, we're gonna put it down there. Our concrete is gonna come in all the way down to here. It's not the end of the world, that is, is fine. If we go the opposite, let's say our formwork, if our formwork was sitting up high, this is not ideal, this is not what we want. Uh, because now, well, our concrete slab is getting a bit thin. So ideally, you'd have your, your uh, formwork sitting flush with the top surface of these blocks. So if you use the top surface of the blocks as sort of your datum, then uh, you'll end up with a nice sort of even slab underneath. Guys, it's not the end of the world if it's not perfect because you're not really gonna look at it. Um, you're really gonna be looking at the, the edges, uh, but hey, it's, it's good to do things to the best of our ability. So let's give it a go. Now, to attach this timber to the blocks behind it, you're gonna need a hammer drill. Because we have to drill through the timber into the concrete behind it and anchor the timber to that uh, concrete block and the, the concrete that's inside. It doesn't have to be a full-on rotary hammer drill like this, but this does make life a lot easier. And um, they're not actually all that expensive to buy from your local hardware store. Uh, and this is one of those projects where if you're maybe a little bit like me and you just really like tools, then this is a great opportunity uh, to, uh, to get some. Uh, so anyway, remember, wear all your safety gear, particularly your safety glasses and your hearing protection. Uh, and I'm gonna put in an anchor about every 500 millimeters, and that'll be more than enough. I'm gonna show you two anchors. Again, we're gonna have the, uh, the concrete screw, the masonry screw. Uh, and I'm going to show you the double nail method. Uh, now the particular anchors that I'm using are an 8mm anchor, uh, so I'm using an 8mm drill bit. Check out the, uh, the size of the, the anchors that you're using and make sure you're using a suitable bit for that anchor. One question you might be asking is, well, how deep do I need to go? And that all depends on the depth of the anchor you're using. So I actually don't technically have to go all that deep, maybe. 60 mil into the concrete, uh, but these holes do have a tendency of getting filled with concrete dust, so always drill in a little bit further than you think you need to. So to put this in, it's really, really easy. Just get yourself uh, some kind of impact driver. You could use uh, a, you know, a socket and, and, and ratchet it in, um, or again, maybe you have a small addiction to power tools, and while it's not strictly necessary, it's fun. 
So you see that went all the way in, it's pulled in really hard, it's actually bitten into that timber. So I can take this clamp off now, and uh, it's not going anywhere. Now, I'll show you the nail method, uh, which is just as valid. One thing you do have to be careful is that you drill a hole that's gonna suit the size nails you're using. You wanna use quite large nails because they have to embed into the concrete. The idea is as they push into the hole, they sort of push into each other and they lock in there. And then later on, when you're done, you can just get a claw hammer, and pull them out, and your formwork will come off. We get our two large nails, we put them both into the hole together, tap them in, and then you really belt them in. So we actually drilled that out to a 10 mil hole, because these are quite heavy gauge nails, uh, and that gave us really good bite. So I can take this clamp off as well now. This thing is going nowhere. Frankly, the screw-in anchors are really nice. Uh, and for the ones that are out exposed, you're gonna be able to pull them out and reuse them later on. So I really like those. But if you don't have access to those and you know maybe don't have those tools, this is a really good option. And it's just as strong for the purposes of this. We're just dealing with downward force. We're not dealing with pull out force. It's just pressure downwards. They're gonna provide just the same support as that is. So we have a nice solid timber all the way around the perimeter of this area. So I've gone all the way around to the front so that when we cut our piece of form ply, it's gonna be supported all the way around the edges. You can get away with little sections that aren't supported if you're using good ply. Uh, now, I will say that you don't have to use form ply. Form ply is relatively expensive. The reason for that is it's reusable, so concreters buy it and they'll use it over and over and over again until it wears out. Uh, so if you want to, you can use other plywood. Uh, if it doesn't have a film face on it, you will need to oil it to prevent the concrete from bonding to the plywood uh, when, you, when you pour it. So you would, I'll take you through that process um, later on, but uh, you don't have to use Form ply. One of the beauties of form ply is it's incredibly strong, and so theoretically, I could have like left out a big section through here, and it wouldn't it wouldn't sag there. It it can span quite a significant gap without dipping. Uh, but being an engineer, I'm a bit conservative, I guess, uh, and so it doesn't cost very much or take too much time to really beef it up and make sure that it doesn't give way on you when you pour your concrete. So we've done the front. Now we're going to do uh, this back section, it's the same process, just a different area. So sometimes, particularly when you're building a corner stand, uh, you can't really get the drill in near the end. We do want to support the timber near the ends. So there's no harm in going in on an angle. Uh, so we just want to get you know, within a foot of the end of this to give it really good support. Make sure you don't aim for your Rio, because these don't drill through Rio too well. Timber supports are all in, so the next step is to measure up and cut the plywood that's going to sit on top of this. Uh, now again, if you're building a rectangular stand, that's actually really easy. It's literally a matter of just measuring the rectangle and cutting it out, um, allowing, I would, I would take off about five millimeters so that it doesn't jam, so you've got a bit of tolerance around the edges. Uh, for me, this is a fairly complex shape, uh, and I have to cut my formwork to drop in to fill this. Uh, so for the back, it's a pretty simple triangle. I'm just gonna measure that up and cut it. For the front, I'm going to measure it up roughly 
cut it roughly and then I'm actually going to lay it on top and just do some markings in place so that I can get the shape that I want. Um, now, another thing to note is it doesn't have to be a single piece. So this, I could put a divider down the middle uh, and have them meet in, in the middle here. Uh, and then I would just put a backing strip underneath that to support it so that uh, we're not getting any leakage through that. But basically, all you're trying to do is fill this void with plywood. So I'm gonna measure up and get to work. sacrificial we're not going to get this out this is staying put uh, so it doesn't have to be particularly pretty uh, and as you can see I couldn't really do it in one piece it was just a little bit too big to get out of a single sheet of form ply so I cut it in two no problem I've got a nice neat join along the middle uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this piece of pine and I'm going to screw it to the back uh, so that when uh, these this gets loaded up pushing down only on this and, and, uh, and trying to bend this, it's also trying to bend this piece of pine. So this is going to act as, as reinforcing, as a sort of a, a stiffener, if you will, underneath the ply to give it a little bit more strength, which would be more than enough to handle the weight of the wet concrete on top of it. So with that additional support there, so we've got supports all around the perimeter and we've got a support in the middle there, I can jump on this, it's really good and strong. I'm going to screw it into the timber around the perimeter as well, and that just give it a, even a little bit more strength. Uh, but that's the process. You're putting in timber to cover the void so that the concrete doesn't fall through. I've cut out a very basic shape here that is going to get right into this corner. Uh, and then what I'm doing is I'm just looking over and figuring out where the next cut needs to be, and I'm marking that out. Now I'm gonna cut it, uh, I'm gonna cut it bigger than I think it needs to be, because I can always take a little bit more off. It, putting it back on is somewhat more challenging. You can see that the, the joints, uh, you know, there's a good five, six mil of, of gap, you know, around them. And that really doesn't matter, because any concrete that gets down in there is just gonna hit that bearer that's underneath. Concrete's not like water, it's fairly thick, um, so it's not just gonna hose out through a tiny little hole. We will seal them up later on though with some silicon around the edges just to stop any excess slurry in the concrete from bleeding out. But what I want you to take away from this is you don't have to cut it like to the millimeter, you know, you've got some tolerance. Form ply is quite expensive, but plywood generally isn't the cheapest stuff in the world, and so we don't want to waste it. Uh, and so just like I said before, we, you know, I mentioned you don't have to do it out of one piece. You can sort of patch it together, providing you then provide the support underneath it to prevent the form fly from, you know, from falling apart. So we've got this weird, wonderful shape that we made, and that's sort of doing about half of, of that area there at the moment. Uh, and we've got this offcut, which is really good material, but unfortunately it's not quite big enough to do the whole thing. So instead of trying to you know, just cut it out of a, another sheet and, and, and use up most of a sheet. Uh, we're going to make most of this shape with this piece and then we're going to fill in the gap between them. So my plan is for this particular stand, I want the concrete slab to come all the way out to the front of these blocks. So I'm going to cut across this edge uh, and so that's where I want my concrete to stop. Now I could, if I wanted to, I could extend that out uh, I, I could have a, you know, a, a section hanging out the front as a landing. Um, the size of this particular stand is more than enough room for a landing uh, within this space. But just be aware, like just because your block work is a certain size, doesn't mean your suspended slab has to stop there. 
can hang over the edges. So for example, we actually, something that happens quite regularly is we get a phone call from someone who has started to build a wood fired oven. Um, they've gone and, and built a stand and then they found our website and said, oh, I really want one of those kits, but I've gone and built a stand that's not quite big enough. I, I haven't pulled the suspended slab yet, but my brickwork is, you know, maybe it's 1300 square or something like that. There's nothing to stop you from extending the slab out. This is called a cantilever. Uh, and the idea is it's concrete that's hanging out in space and what's supporting it is the reinforcing that's in the concrete. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that at all. In fact, you can, I'd be more than comfortable with any of my customers doing a cantilever of a full 300 millimeters a foot. Um, would not be an issue providing you're using the right reinforcing, which I'll cover a little bit later. So, this is just how I'm doing this particular stand, but if you wanted to, if you wanted to have an extension that came out here, maybe you want to have a bit of concrete hanging out the side as a bench area, or maybe, again, you, you're wanting to bring the front out a little bit so that you've got room for a nice big granite landing in front, you can do it. It's just a matter of making a wooden box that you can pour concrete into. Now on that, if I was to, let's say I was to do a, a cantilever out here, I would put some legs underneath that, down to the ground to support that so that the concrete doesn't cause that boxing to fall over. We've got our front edge where we're going to cut it. Uh, now I want to create an infill in here, obviously concrete's sort of just going to go through there. Uh, so I'm going to cut a piece of timber to drop in there and we're going to do a similar thing to what we did at the back uh, where we put some additional timber to stitch the two pieces together. cut uh, so we want to secure them to the, the timber sort of battens that we put in before I'm just going to put in a Phillips head screw every three or four hundred mil roughly it's just to stop those pieces moving around uh, particularly once we get the concrete in on top and we're vibrating it we want to make sure that uh, this this form work isn't going to move at all so a bunch of screws screws are cheap so put in as many as you want uh, but every three or four hundred mil will be plenty piece in here uh, and you know due to the nature of my cutting it's not perfect but guess what it doesn't have to be uh, first thing we're going to do is again we get a bit of timber that we're going to put in underneath that and screw it to either side to give that some support uh, now there is a gap it's about four mil or so in between these two pieces it's nice nice and close here but it opens up a little bit here uh, and what we can do is we can just cover that with tape uh, and that is going to stop the concrete leaking out through there. Right, this does take a while, so please don't beat yourself up uh, if you know you're finding this process does uh, you know, take a bit of time. Uh, but it's all worth it in the end because this thing's going to be here for a very, very long time. We've got our sections in. We haven't wasted too much plywood, which is great. So we've used all our offcuts uh, and and. Put it all together now what we do want to do is we're going to later on we're going to put in a support here just a little leg going down to the ground just a bit of pine uh, that will hold up with some packers so we get it to the right height uh, just to stop any sag uh, from happening particularly given that we've got all these different sections of ply that we've used up here so for your design uh, depending on how wide your span is uh, you might want to have more legs more, more supports i would usually say don't have a, a span greater than maybe 600 millimeters that's unsupported okay now across the front here we've got about closer to 900 so we're going to put one in the middle and then that breaks it up into two 450 mil spans from the front to the back um, we've got oh we've got about 1100 so we might put a span a, a little support in the middle as well Again, it's all set up and use a little bit of material, but the last thing you want is to pour your concrete and then have some of your formwork move on you. Uh, so take your time, put it.
put in as many legs as, as you deem necessary. If you look at it and sort of eyeball it and say, that looks really good and strong, hey, it probably is. Uh, so we're going to keep going now. The next step in this process is to create the formwork that makes the walls of this box that we're going to be pouring the concrete into. But what is critical is that you do get a nice straight edge on that bit of plywood because you're going to be using that edge as a screed rail. So you're going to be screeding the concrete to the top of that edge. And if you, let's say you cut a long strip of timber and you, it's a bit wobbly, then your slab is going to follow that profile because you'll be screeding to, to that line. So uh, how to cut a straight line with a circular saw uh, is, is pretty straightforward. It has guides. Uh, so every circular saw has uh, this sort of platen on the bottom. Uh, and what I like to do is get a, a straight piece of material. I've got a bit of steel here. Honestly, you could use another piece of form ply. The, the factory edges on the plywood are usually laser straight. Uh, so you could actually use a piece of timber for this if it's straight. Whatever you use, it, you're gonna end up with the same line. So if, if I use a bit of steel and it's got a big bow in it, well, my cut's gonna have a bow in it as well. So the first thing we do is we actually figure out what the distance is from the inside of the blade to the edge of this base, right? And now for ours, is 39 millimeters, which is a, you'd think they could go 40 or something like that, wouldn't you? But no, uh, this, this, this one here is 39 millimeters. So when I want to cut something, I'm gonna need to remember that 39 millimeters. Uh, now this is, this is not one of the pieces, but this is just to sort of describe it before we start cutting. We basically want our slab to be 120 millimeters. 110 to 120. I like to go 120. I think that's a, the sweet spot and uh, we'll describe later why we make it that thick. But we want 110 or 120 millimeters of concrete to be above this surface. Uh, so we're not going to cut these strips to 120 because then how will how would we attach them? We've got nothing to, to bolt to. So we're gonna actually going to cut them to 200 millimeters height and that will give us an 80 millimeter overlap so we can bolt or use the nails through this surface into the blocks and that's going to pin the formwork to the sides for us uh, so we can pour the concrete. So I'm going to be cutting in this direction which means the short side of this base is on, on this side of the, uh, of the cut. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I want 200 millimeters of material left so I'm going to add my 39 mil uh, and make a mark. So 239 millimeters. Now, I've got a rail that the saw is going to run along, which enables me to cut just a nice straight piece. I can repeat this over and over again, and I'm going to get a dead straight cut every single time. So remember, you don't have, it doesn't have to be a piece of steel. I have a lot of this around. Uh, it could be a piece of timber. It could be something else, but just something that's going to give you a nice straight edge that's the length of your sheet. Okay, so we've got a very sort of complicated uh, setup here. We're building into a corner uh, and we're actually building quite close to this wall and we're about, uh, about 50 mil off that wall over there, uh, whereas we're only about 15 mil off this wall here. Uh, and we actually done that semi on purpose the beauty of it is that we get to sort of describe a few different techniques for using your formwork and for attaching formwork. So what I want you to imagine is that you're building your stand up against your house. Uh, so this is actually fairly common. People build their ovens quite close to their home and there's no problem with that at all. Uh, if this was a brick veneer surface, uh, then we wouldn't want to concrete hard against that. If we run the concrete right up against the brickwork, uh, when our concrete expands just that tiny little bit, because when we fire up the oven, a small amount of heat gets into the concrete and it will cause it to expand slightly. We don't want that expansion to translate into cracking in this brick structure, right? So we want to have a gap here. Uh, now, if you've built your, your, your uh, block work fairly close, say 10 millimeters or so, 
uh, off the brickwork, then you can use Ableflex. Uh, it may be called something different uh, depending on where you, you are, but Ableflex is effectively a, an adhesive backed foam material that is used in uh, concrete construction very, very commonly. And basically it's to create a, a, an expansion joint between a concrete slab and a, a wall or, or maybe another concrete slab. Okay, now you can buy that at most hardware stores. Uh, it's usually about a half inch or about 10 or 12 millimeters thick and it has an adhesive backing to it. So you can stick it onto your brickwork uh, and then pour the concrete up against that. So if this was a brick wall, what I would be doing is drawing out my 120 mil line. I would actually draw that on the wall and then I would stick the Ableflex just under that line, running just underneath that line and I would pour my concrete and screed it off to the top of that Ableflex. Then when the concrete sets, uh, I can actually just leave the Ableflex there. I could remove it if I wanted to, but you don't really need to. Uh, and I know that no expansion in that concrete slab is going to affect the wall behind it. All right. What we're doing is a little different. We're building this in our factory here. This is actually a timber surface. Uh, and so we've, we've got about nearly 15 to 20 mil gap here. And so what we're going to do is actually put in uh, formwork against here. And I'm actually going to just put a few little brad nails through the formwork into this surface behind it. We're going to use very small nails. The idea being uh, once the concrete is set, we're going to come along and just knock this formwork up and out, which will basically just bend those nails over. So we'll do a bit of hammering and we'll end up knocking that formwork out so we can remove it. Okay, so that's what we're going to do for this surface here. The reason I'm telling you this is Look, this, this may not actually apply to you, but in this build, we are doing several different formwork techniques, and hey, maybe one of them is gonna to apply to you, and maybe this information helps you out. Hopefully it does. All right, guys, frankly, I hope you never find yourself in the situation where you're building a stand like this, where it's sort of not hard against, not, you know, not quite close enough to a wall to use Ableflex, but too close to actually get in and, uh, and put you know anchors in. But if you do find yourself in that situation, fear not, because there is a solution. Uh, what I've done here is I've cut my 200 mil length of uh, formwork, and I've actually screwed a strip of timber along the underside, about 50 mil height, so that when I push against that strip, it's pushing in against the blocks. Uh, what we're gonna use is wedges. So I've actually just cut some form ply wedges as a really slight taper on this piece. So when I put this in here, down in behind, it's actually going to push as I tap it in. It's pushing this in against that surface and it's holding it there. But imagine if we just put a wedge in at the top, it would try and tip it over. We have to have the force being transferred in down here in order to hold it there nice and tight. So. That's what we've done. We've just used good old fashioned wedges. I've put this temporary block here just to hold this at 120 mil height so that I can get the wedges in. So I'll go along, I'm gonna put all those wedges in, probably half a dozen wedges. And then before I take these out, I'm gonna put in my next piece from here, screw it into that, which is gonna prevent this from falling. And then I'll be able to take those out. We can move on. But yeah, again, Preferably, I'd just be able to get around that side and put some anchors in there, uh, but that's not always possible. And that's what we wanted to show you here is there is a solution. Uh, and even, even if that gap was quite large, I could use a similar method, just using some spaces and then wedges to give me the same result. So on these faces here, this, this exposed block work, it's really quite easy. It's actually quite similar to what we did on the inside with the battens that we screwed on. We're just gonna get our form ply, you know, put it up against this face with 120 millimeters showing above the blocks, and we're gonna screw it on with the anchors, the concrete anchors. We've got our piece of plywood here cut, ready to attach to the sides uh, and, uh, and, and screw on. 
Uh, and another technique that we wanted to point out to you was uh, strengthening the side pieces. These, because they're so short, technically don't really need any, uh, any stiffening. But if you were dealing with, say, a full length piece, like nearly two meters long, what you can find is that the pressure of the concrete can cause the, the formwork to want to bow along that edge, from, just from the pressure of, of the wet concrete. Uh, and so what you can do is you can attach a piece of pine to the back of it uh, and that's going to give it a lot of strength, it's acting as a stiffener. Uh, now we deliberately put this below the top surface so that it doesn't interfere with our screed rail, that, that edge. That's, that's our top edge, we don't, want, we don't want the pine to be hanging above that. So we just put it 5 10 mil below that. Uh, and we screw it uh, on. Pop that on and now you can see that this top edge has a lot of strength in it. It's not going to move around a bow at all. Again, technically we don't really need to do it here because this is a very short piece. It's, it's unlikely to flex but you'll see actually in the written instructions that we put together for building a stand we do talk about this method um, particularly for when you're building a rectangular stand. If we were building, let's say we we're building this corner stand out in the open these are very long lengths. This is 1.9 meters. That's a long unsupported length. So we would we'll put something like this behind it to give it a bit more strength. The way we've got those ones set up, they're really well braced, actually from quite high up, particularly that one. So I'm not worried about them moving around. If you find yourself doing this job by yourself, which is pretty standard, uh, this is a tip that will make life a little bit easier when it comes to setting this up because there's not always it's not always possible to clamp these things on uh, so what you can do is you can measure your height of your slab now I'm going with 120 mil and then if I put a little block on the inside that block is going to sit on my block work uh, and it's going to hold this formwork at the right height for me so I don't have to worry about clamping it. Uh, so we're screwing these on and I just want to point out where I'm screwing through. So I don't want to screw through up here because it's just going to go through to empty air. Don't want to be too close to the edge of the formwork either. So I'm going to just go about, about an inch and a half there or so, you know, 30, 40 mil up from that edge. So I'm going into nice thick concrete. Now, you could make this formwork deeper. You could make it 300 mil deep and then you've got miles of, of form ply to screw through. It's kind of wasteful. Um, and so we're trying to, trying to do this without wasting too much material. Uh, so you can get away with, with 200 because that gives you an 80 mil uh, overlap. Uh, but if you, if you want more, hey, that's up to you. But you can get away with this much. Across this front face here, this is actually the easiest one, we again, sort of similar to what we do with the concrete, except we're just going to screw into this timber. So I've cut a piece of uh, our 200mm ply to go across the front, uh, so that's just a nice, oh, it's very satisfying actually, that, that fit. What I've done is I've actually measured down 130mm from the top edge and drawn a line so that I can just put my screws into that and know that they're going to end up in the plywood on the other side. Uh, just something I learned the hard way. Uh, so again, in the spirit of overdoing it, uh, we're going to another piece of timber and just screw that from the inside. It's going to stiffen up this piece and we're also going, it also allows me to adjust the angle of this section because it's currently just leaning in a tiny little bit. So I'll be able to pull that out and put a screw through those two to hold it together. Uh, we want to put a prop in the middle here. Now, again, do we really need one? Yeah, maybe not, but why not? Uh, and, and again, if you were building one that had a wider opening, so you were doing one of the rectangular stands, it's got a fairly wide opening at the front, then you'd want to put a prop, a leg or even two in the middle there just to support it. For more detail, uh, check out the written instructions that we've done for building an oven stand because we go into a little bit more detail about spacings and, uh, and things like that. All right, so what I've done is I've just cut a piece of pine that is deliberately short. Uh, and what we're gonna do is just use one of our wedges 
to hold that up. Now, you could use packers. Um, the other way you could do it is you could cut it deliberately slightly long and put it in on an angle and then tap it in until it locks in good and hard. Uh, remember, you're just gonna knock it out afterwards anyway. So, whichever method you use, the principle is we're just creating a support in the center here so that this plywood is not spanning uh, a massive gap all by itself. Another point I would like to make is you may have laid your block work on foundations that weren't completely level. We get asked this uh, semi-regularly, someone will say to us, look, we have our foundation slab, but it's on a little bit of a slope. Um, what do you think we should do? There's a few options uh, there for you. One option would be to actually mortar your block work down. So that first course of block work, if you're planning on using a system like this, technically we don't have to mortar these together. But if my foundations were a bit uneven, I could mortar the first course down to pick up any changes in level or unevenness in the slab. Uh, so I could actually get my block work level uh, and then you know, continue building as we've done. Another way of doing it, if, you're, if your foundation slab is nice and flat, but it's just got a bit of a lean, maybe it's away from you or left to right, you could just build the block work flat on that slab, which means the block work itself will be on a slight angle. Um, and then you could actually fix up the level of the suspended slab using your formwork, uh, or using this formwork that we're setting up behind us. So you could actually, for example, if um, let's say uh, our foundations here um, were tilted back this way a little bit, so they were um, going you know, back away from me. Uh, it's like, like this if I exaggerate. What I could do is um, I could say, right, I'm gonna make sure I've got my minimum 120 mil of, of uh, slab here um, behind me, but, and I just put in a bolt at this end, just fix it at this point. Then I get out a level and I put it on top of that formwork and I can adjust this end until it's flat, okay? And then I fix it off at that point. Uh, so I can level up my suspended slab to be you know, perfectly flat and level, regardless of the, the angle that the block work might be on. I hope that makes sense. If you want some more detail around that, we've put a little bit more information about it in the written instructions for building your wood-fired oven stand, so check those out. Um, but most of the time, to be honest, having a tiny bit of fall on your stand, whether it's left to right or front to back, is not really too much of an issue. In fact, sometimes it's a good thing because it means that water will run off it rather than ponding on the surface. Um, my personal approach is I tend to build my stands completely level because it just makes life easier when it comes to um, sort of setting out my floor tiles and things like that. I can refer to the level when I'm bedding those tiles down and getting them flat. Uh, anyway, you'll see that later on, but I hope this is helping you um, and giving you some ideas about how you might uh, tackle your form. One day, someone is going to pull these apart. Let's say in a hundred years time, someone might tear this down and it would be kind of cool if when they did, they expose this, you know, this opening at the back uh, and they opened it up and they found some cool stuff inside. So, we're going to uh, just lift up this back panel and we're going to put some, some cool things inside. So we've got a simple nickel. Now this page get and basically So I'm And for the possibility of the water wars of 2050 uh, just in case this becomes a super expensive resource we've got some delicious Mount Franklin water and last but not least our uh, Bitcoin wallet which I'm sure is going to be immensely valuable a hundred years from now all right so we're gonna seal this up and 
one day someone is going to open this and they're going to be very, very confused, very quickly. I think it's kind of a fun idea. Um, might as well write some notes in there. Do something fun. Because you never know who's going to be pulling it apart in a hundred years time. Maybe it's archaeologists and they're trying to discover more about you. Maybe you should put like a little bibliography in there or something. Leave it up to you. Now there is some other cool stuff that you can do with your stamp. This is fun. But some more practical things. Uh, one of our customers did something really cool and he actually got 3D printed lettering uh, that he stuck to the formwork and wrote messages to his grandkids. Uh, that they, when the formwork was pulled out, it left the impression of the letters on the inside, uh, which is a really cool idea. I've seen other people do sort of a similar thing with putting an imprint on the inside of the formwork on the front edge, uh, so it actually had like the family, it was a family name and the year that it was made. Uh, so there's some cool stuff that you can do because concrete is a, it's a really permanent thing, lots a really long time. And if you, you know, put something into the formwork, it's going to leave that impression on the concrete. Um, it's, it's kind of fun. So, anyway. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, when you cut your formwork out, it's very difficult to cut it so that it's perfectly snug with all of your block work. Particularly if you're dealing with something crazy like, like this kind of uh, joint we have going down here. Uh, so please don't worry, if you do have a gap, you can always fill it in. Uh, so we're just gonna use good old fashioned silicon, nothing fancy about it, it's just ordinary silicon. And anywhere that we have a gap that we're concerned about it leaking, we'll just put silicon in there. We're gonna let that dry for a couple of days before we pull the concrete. If you've got an edge, let's say your formwork is attached to your blocks or your bricks, and you don't want any kind of slurry or concrete to run down in between the formwork and the blocks and, and sort of you know, might damage your bricks or make it just look a bit ugly, just run a little bit of silicon along that edge just so that no, none of the slurry that's in the concrete gets down through that gap. When you vibrate the concrete, uh, it behaves like a liquid. When it's, when it's just sitting there, it's very stiff and solid, but as soon as you vibrate it, it flows almost like water. Uh, and it will get into very, very tight gaps. So if you're worried about some slurry getting out, just whack a little bit of silicon in there. There you have it, guys. That is our formwork all done, ready for our reinforcing to go in and then pouring the concrete, uh, which is frankly the quick part. So like I said right at the start, it is more of a complicated process than uh, doing your block work, uh, which is quick and fun. Uh, it, it is a little bit uh, more hard work, but effectively it's just making a big strong wooden box that we're going to pour concrete into. It's not this incredibly difficult task, it's, it's just some carpentry really uh, and frankly it's actually quite good fun, uh, particularly if you do think about you know doing some creative things with it. There's other things that I haven't even touched on, so things like putting in um, curves, you can play around with curved plywood to create curved edges and things like that. I'm not even going to touch on any of that stuff. There's plenty of other YouTube videos out there to help you with that. But hopefully this video has been helpful in uh, sort of giving you some confidence in doing your own formwork for your wood-fired oven. So in the next video, we're going to show you how to cut and set up your reinforcing uh, and then we're going to be pouring concrete.